friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day seven of my 2023 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebird's brand new Cup of Cheer and Holiday Littles stamp sets. So I stamped the images I'll be using on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm starting with my bear and I wanted to make him a polar bear because I absolutely love polar bears. So I'm gonna color him in some very pale creamy shades. I'm using E000, E40, and E41. So I'm starting with the E41 and laying in a bit of shadow wherever I think it should go. He's facing pretty much forward so his shadows are falling equally on the left and the right for his face. The lower part of his body seems tipped just a little bit toward the left. You can see from the direction that his feet are facing. So I did put my shadows just slightly different on the right hand side for that. And also a nice shadow underneath his sweater and around his cozy scarf. Then I blend it out with the E40 and then use the E000 and let that fade into the white cardstock for uh, an extra bit of highlight. I'm going to continue using this combo for any of the white fur on the other four critters. So the lower part of the fox's face, the inner part of the ear, and the tip of his tail. And then I'm also going to use that on the little otter's belly. I love this little otter. I think he's so, so sweet. So I put the shading up under his arms and that cup. And then I'm going to do the whites of the squirrel as well. Again, the lower part of the face and the belly. And I'm also going to add a little bit to the underside of his tail. I just thought that would give him a fun and different look. It's really cozy, I think. So I'm going to move on next to my fox. And I'm going to use a brand new combination to me. So in our little Hello Bluebird group, we were chatting about different colors of Copic markers to use for foxes, and people were suggesting different combos. And this one comes from Tammy on our design team, and I just thought I would give it a try because I typically use the same combo over and over. It's always nice to mix it up. The combo that I'm using is E21, E95, E97 and E99. It's a bit more muted than the typical combo that I go for, a little less bright orange and a little more extra brown tone in it. And I have to say, I really love how it turned out. It's nice to have different combos for different things. I still really like my go-to combo for foxes, which is YR12, YR14, and YR18 but I think this one is definitely going to be one that I'm going to continue to use, especially in the winter time when you want a bit more of a muted tone. I think this works really well. And I actually jotted down some of the other design team girls' suggestions. So I definitely want to try those out in the future. And maybe I could even do a little mini tutorial on how to color foxes in different combos, like I've done in the past for gorillas and elephants. So if you think that would interest you, let me know. And maybe I can do that in the new year. So next I'm going to move over to my river otter and I'm going to use E43, E44, and E47 for him. I wanted to go with something that was a bit more in the grayish tone. I think that's a bit more realistic for otters. So that's what I decided to go for. I'm using the E47 first for a bit of shadow. This is a very dark shade, so I'm being really careful with it, just using the smallest amount possible to really provide that impact with the shading. And then I'll come in with the E44 and start to blend that out. I'm going to be very careful to make sure that I'm catching the edge of that E47 and dragging it into this mid-tone with the E44 to try to remove any harsh lines. Because this is fur, I want it to look nice and soft and just have a nice fade as it goes from the dark to the medium to the light. 
So I'm just going to continue working on that until I have pulled out the mid-tone on all of those areas, still leaving plenty of room for a highlight. And then I'll come in with the E43. Now you could fill in completely with the E43. At first that had been my intention, but I just decided that I wanted a little extra highlight on the center of his face. And then I also left a little bit on the tip of his paws and feet and his tail. So I'm gonna pull in a fourth shade for that. I'm gonna pull in E42. So I'll just fill in any remaining white space, and I think that looks really nice and natural with the lighter E40s that I had used on the belly. So it's all just really in the same family of colors, and I think that makes it look really cohesive. So then I am going to move on to my little trees while I have these shades out. I'm gonna use that E44 to color in the trunk. So I'm just starting at the bottom and then adding a little bit of color to that center line. You could also just color them fully green if you wanted to, but I wanted to have that little bit of brown in there. And I only use the one shade because it's such a small area and it's gonna kind of fade into the green once I add that in. I also colored in the little sliver of coffee showing in the Polar Bear's mug with that E44. And then I'm gonna use these darkest three shades to do the lid of the to-go mug. So I am a Tim Hortons girl. I absolutely love it. And my go-to drink is a cafe mocha. And Tim Hortons cups are red with a dark brown lid. So that's what I am coloring these to look like on today's card. For my little squirrel, I'm gonna color him in some gray tones. Even though red squirrels are my favorite, red squirrels actually do turn gray in the winter time. So I decided to go with the grays, especially since we already had the reddish toned fox. I just wanted to have something different for the squirrel. So I'm gonna use T0, T1, and T3. I went with these really pale shades because I think it's gonna fade nicely into that creamy color that I've put on the underside of the tail. So I blended out the T3 with the T1. I put a little shading up on the bridge of his nose and the top of his head, bottoms of his ears and arms and the backs of his legs, and then the part of his tail that is up against his body because the light wouldn't be able to hit that. His body's in the way. So that's where the shading would be. And then I'm gonna use the T0 as my lightest and just add that anywhere that there's any remaining white space. And then once I get to the tail, I'm gonna feather that right into that creamy area and just overlap slightly. So it just fades really nicely from one tone to the other. Next, I wanted to add in some rosy cheeks. I'm gonna use R00 and R20 for that. I'll also fill in the insides of their ears, and I'm adding that R20 first. For the otter, I just left the R20 since he's a little bit darker, but for the others, I'm gonna blend that out with the R00, and actually that ended up being still a little bit too bright for me, so I'm gonna pull in the R000, and just go over the edges with that, and that's gonna help it fade into that light, creamy colored fur really nicely. Then I'm going to continue working with these shades and color in the mittens on the polar bear and the scarf on the squirrel. Again, starting with that R20, and then blending out with the R00, and then I'll use the R000 to add in the highlight. And then for the squirrel, I'm gonna add a design to that later on. So I'm gonna leave it to dry for now. And I'm gonna move on to a little bit of a darker combo. I'm gonna take away the R000 and add in R22. And I will do the fox's sweater. So I'm starting with the R22 now and laying in some shadows wherever I think they should go on the back side of the little sweater, the underside of the sleeve and under that little coffee mug, and then blending out with the R20, and then a little of that R00. 
And now the squirrel's scarf has dried enough for me to come in and add a little dot design with that R22. Just adding little polka dots here and there. And then I'm gonna keep the R22 and darken that up with R24 and R29. And I'm gonna do the bear's scarf. So I'm starting with the R29 and just coloring in any place that I think those shadows would be. So basically where that fabric is bunched up and has little lines drawn in it to indicate that the fabric is kind of folded over and then also just on the bottom edge there. And then I'm gonna blend that out with the R24. And again, just making sure to really pull out that darkest color with this mid-tone, but leave plenty of room for a highlight so we get that nice bit of contrast. And then I'll fill that in with the R22. And I just did the top half first because there was all those folds and I wanted to really concentrate. And then after I was done, I'm gonna move down to the lower part of the scarf. And I just added my shading for that kind of under his arm and the mug, and then also where the little um, fringe is. And then I'll blend that out once again with the mid-tone and fill in with the highlight shade. And I think that red looks so festive next to his cream-colored fur. To tie that shade in somewhere else on the scene, I'm gonna do the edge of the fox's sweater. So I'm just carefully going in with that darkest R29 and adding a little bit of that, and then blending out with the R24, and then adding in that R22 in the center and on the top edge of the sleeve. Then I'll darken up that combo once again by taking away the R22 and adding in the R39. And I will use this combo to do my little red to-go cups. So I'm gonna do the R39 on the side that is facing the critter where the shadow would be. And then I'll blend out with the R29. And then the R24 is going to go on the front side where the light would be reflecting the most. And I just love that beautiful warm glow that that R24 adds to this combo. So now that my reds and pinks are done, I'm going to move on to some green tones. The first one that I'm gonna use is G quadruple zero, G zero zero, and G02. And I'm going to do this scarf for the river otter. And I'm gonna start with that G02 and then I will blend out with the G00 and then use the G quadruple zero for the highlight. Again, I'm gonna be adding a pattern to his scarf in a little bit. So I like to start with a really light shade so that the pattern will show up nicely. So that's why I tend to go for some of the zeros in there as my highlight because it just helps to add a little bit of color but still give you plenty of room to add you know different details to it i'm also going to use this combo for the bears sweater this time i'm going to be a little bit more heavy-handed with that g02 to make it a bit brighter though i'll add that to the underside of his sleeves and then to the lower part of his sweater under his arms also his scarf would be casting a little bit of shadow there and his mug. So I used just a little bit under there and then I'm gonna blend that out with the G00 once again. And then I'll use that G quadruple zero to fill anything else in. And I'm not doing a pattern on his sweater but I just wanted to have that color tied in in another place just like always. I like to have those little pops spread throughout and I'm gonna do the fox's gloves with this combo too, just to have it in three places. Next, I'm gonna go in the same family, but just much darker using G03, G07, and G09. And I'll use that for the edges of the polar bear's sweater, so his cuffs and hem. And the G07, for some reason, always ends up being a little bit darker than the G09, at least for mine. So I forget that from time to time because I don't use this combo that often. But I added in the G09 first, but then I went back and added that G07 
in for the shadow and then blend it out with the Geo 3. I'm going to use the same combo for the Fox's scarf and this time I started with the Geo 7 because then I remembered and then blend it out with the Geo 9 and then use the Geo 3 for the highlight. And I'm not doing a detail on his scarf either, so that's why it was okay for me to go with some of the darker shades. But I will use these shades to add the pattern to the River Otter's scarf. I'm going to do a plaid. So I'm using the GO3 first. I'm adding in diagonal stripes, and I did them all in the same direction except for when I got to the underside of that fabric where it's flipped over, and I reversed it there. And then I'm using the G07 for my alternating stripes. Then I'm going to switch to some even darker greens. I'm going to use G16 and G29. These are very cool toned greens, so they fit really well with the greens that I've already been using, but they are quite a bit darker, which is what I was going for, because I really wanted those trees to stand out and be set apart from the greens that I'd used in their outfits. So I'm taking that G29 and adding that to the branches closest to the trunk of the tree. And then I'll use that G16 and just pull that color out toward the ends. So just using those two shades because the area that I'm coloring is very, very thin. And I do have to use the very tip of my marker and be careful so that I don't go out of the lines because there's not a whole lot of room there. But you definitely can do it with um, just using that marker, you know, almost perpendicular, like you're holding it almost straight up and down and using light pressure. You don't want to press down too hard or you might end up going out of the lines. For the Bear's Mug, I'm going to use T0 and T1. Just went back to those tones from the Squirrel. I hadn't been sure what I was going to do with this yet, but I ended up deciding to do white. I'm going to add a detail to that later on toward the end of the video. But for now, I'm going to grab a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and go over the eyes of my critters to make them bright and shiny and trim these images out with their matching dyes. Moving on to my background, I've cut down two pieces of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock with the Hello Bluebird Hill and Dale dyes. And I'm actually going to use some cracked pistachio to add a little bit of a frosty glow to the top of my snowdrifts. I decided to go with green tones rather than blue because it would tie in nicer to the Copic coloring that I've already done. Plus it's just a little bit of a different look. It's nice to mix things up and do something just slightly unexpected. So I'm just adding that to the top of both of those hills. And then I'll set those aside and I'm going to bring in a third full panel of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. And this time I'll start with that cracked pistachio towards the center of the card. The bottom part is going to be covered up by the snowdrift, so I'm not going to bother adding in any ink there. That also will give me a place to hold on to that panel and keep my fingers out of the ink. So I will add that and then I'm going to bring in my next shade, which is going to be Lucky Clover. So I'll add that, just kind of blend it in to the cracked pistachio. And then my third and final shade is going to be Pine Needles. And I want to really darken up the top edge and those top two corners with that shade and just create a nice dramatic effect. So I'm going to put on quite a bit of ink there and then I'll work my way back down in the reverse, moving back to that Lucky Clover and then to the Cracked Pistachio. And the thing about Distress Oxide inks is that they really need to be layered to get nice and even and smooth. So I am going to go back in with all three of those shades once again, deepening up that top edge and smoothing out that blend until I have a look that I'm happy with. Once I am, I'm going to add some clear water onto an acrylic block and tap that off the side with a thin paintbrush and allow that water to react with that Distress Oxide ink. It's going to lift some of that color and leave behind little soft specks 
Um, they won't be pure white, but it'll add to that effect of the snow in the distance. Next, I'll mix up some of this pearlized shade from my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors, which is going to create a really nice sheen when you tip this card into the light. Again, it's not going to be super vibrant, especially as it starts to dry back into that cardstock, but it will really add that impact when the card is tipped. So to make that snow really look like snow, I'm going to take some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Mine has gotten pretty thick, so I'm going to mix that up with the water that was left on my acrylic block until it's nice and fluid. And then I'll tap that all over the background as well. And I'm going to continue tapping even sometimes when it doesn't feel like too much is coming off because that's when you get those super fine splatters and I want to get a nice variety of sizes there. And then once I'm done with that, I will set this panel aside to dry completely. In the meantime, I'm going to take my bottom snowdrift and pop that in my Misty. I'm going to stamp on that using some Lawn Fawn Clover ink because I think this is a nice match for the Copic coloring that I've already done. And I'm doing the sentiment that says, wishing you comfort and joy. And I didn't ink that up quite right the first time. There was a little part in the F that didn't stamp down. So I'm going to stamp that down again and just really make sure to press in that spot. And then I ink that up a couple more times to just make sure that you could really read it, especially since it is that scripty font. You want to make sure that all of the letters show up. So I did use my stamp chamois to clean that off and then stamped down one more time just to make sure that all of that ink was nice and even. And then I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to do an insert for the inside of my card. So I just trimmed down a piece of plain white cardstock to be a quarter inch smaller on two sides. And then I'm going to add another one of the critters from this stamp set plus two of the snowflakes and a sentiment that says, have a cozy Christmas. And I added that down on the right hand side just for something a little bit different. So I created an A2 standard size card base out of some MFT Field Day cardstock. It's four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. I'm going to glue that insert down first, just making sure that's on there nice and straight so we get a nice border of that dark green cardstock. And then I will take my focal panel and glue that to the front of my card, just making sure that the corners are lined up nice and straight. And then I can add in my first snowdrift, just kind of using them both as a placeholder to figure out how high I wanted that first snowdrift to go. First meaning the first one I'm attaching, which is actually the, the further back snowdrift. And then I'll take the one that is supposed to be down in front with the sentiment on it and glue that down right over top. And I did have a little bit kind of overhanging on that left hand side that I just trimmed off off screen with my Cutter B scissors. And then I could bring in my images and start to lay out these critters. I really wanted to have them spaced evenly apart and just make sure that they were arranged in a way that I liked. So that's why I decided to do it that first before I started gluing anything down because the glue that I use, the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, I love it, but it dries very quickly. And once you've committed to something, it's pretty much on there permanent. It, you know, it, you only have a few seconds to change your mind. So I just wanted to make sure that I had everything really how I wanted it first and then I could start gluing things down and just making sure that I was utilizing the space on the card front, you know, the way that I wanted to. So I'll add the River Otter next over on the far right, and then I will adhere the little fox. Since the squirrel is overlapping her tail, I needed to add her next. And then I can add that red squirrel on the far left. And I like the way that they are arranged around that sentiment as if they are engaged in conversation or maybe just about to start caroling after they've had a nice hot drink to warm their throats or 
um, you know, whatever. I just think it's nicer to create a little scene that um, seems to tell a little bit of a story. So now I've got five of these tiny trees, which are from the Holiday Littles stamp set, which is also brand new. So I'm just going to arrange those on the scene on that far hill to create a little bit of depth and distance. And while I'm doing that, I just wanted to mention that if you're watching this video the morning that it goes live, which is November 17th, this is a preview of tonight's Christmas slash winter release for Hello Bluebird. It's going to go live tonight, November 17th at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, which is 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you are in my time zone. And I will have an overview of the entire release on my channel today as well. So if you wanna check out everything and make your shopping list before the release goes live, I will have that available for you and you can just head over and take a look. So now I wanted to add a little bit of detail to that Polar Bear's mug and just make it look a bit more festive. I'm not entirely sure that this was super successful, but I went for it. And so um, I just wanted to add a little bit of holly leaves on there. I thought that might be a simple design to do. The leaves were a little bit harder than I thought they would be. And I'm just repeating the same greens that I had used on the trees using that G16 and the G29 for that. And then for the berries, I'm going to repeat some of the reds that I used. I'm going to use the R24 to add some little dots, three little dots. And then I'll use the R39 to just add a little bit of shading between them to make them pop a bit more. So I don't know, like I said, if you're able to tell what they were before I told you, um, but I think it still looks festive with the red and green anyway. And if you were nervous about just drawing something on there freehand, you could always take one of the tiny little images. There's uh, especially like a tiny little star in that Holiday Littles stamp set that I think you could stamp in the center of that mug really easily. But now I'm just taking a white Sakura Jelly Roll pen and adding some snowfall to the scene. Since we have so much snowfall in the background, that would also be falling in front of our critters. It would be falling all around and not just behind them. So I wanted to make sure to integrate that snow into the scene by bringing it forward in front of the images and just adding a little bit here and there with some different sized white dots. I added it to the trees, to their scars, a little bit to their fur, to the mugs, just here and there wherever I thought that it would look right. And I even added some to those hills in the green areas to um, just make that show up a little bit more boldly. And then of course I wanted to add a bit of sparkle so I brought in my favorite Stardust Stickles and I'm going to add that to the tops of the snowdrifts to just really give them that frosty look. I'm just adding a thin line there and then using the nozzle to kind of um, smear it around just on that very top edge. So I'll do that for both of those. It's also going to help separate them out a little bit. And then I also wanted to add it to some of their scarves, or I think I actually did it on all of their scarves, but I just did it carefully, like only in the deepest shadowed areas. I didn't want to cover the whole thing, um, especially because some of that also had the white gel pen on it and the liquid in the Stardust Stickles can make your gel pen smear and kind of dissolve. So I didn't want to go over any place that already had the white gel pen on it. So I was just really strategic with my placement of that glitter. And then I also decided that I wanted the trees to have a little bit of a frosty look. So I'm just adding a touch of that to the very tips of those branches. And I really like how that looked. I think it added a bit of realism to the scene because of course that snow would be falling and catching on those tree branches. And then to tie that in with the rest of the snow, I also just added a few little dots here and there to my sky just for an extra bit of sparkle. I think that's going to look really nice combined with that starry colors from the Gansai Tambi. 
there I will show you all of that detail and those little flashes of glitter and of course give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to check out the Hello Bluebird blog for so much inspiration from the design team and also my video with the overview of the entire release so you can make your shopping list. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do that and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video because I've been posting so many bonus videos lately. I'll also include day seven of the previous two years of holiday card series here on screen. So if you'd like to continue watching, you can click on either one. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.